Hey everyone, welcome to Life of a Vegan Mixer. So listen, this episode is about to be crazy, candid, and let me tell you something. I was really pissed. Like, you want to see how pissed I was? Stay tuned for more because the vegan foodie was upset but welcome to life of a vegan vixen stay tuned for more so listen we're gonna get right into it first and foremost um in june me and my husband was like you know what we want to have a honeymoon slash birthday trip that would be epic. We want to go somewhere that I've never been and he's never been. So listen, we booked the tickets. We booked the Airbnb. I even booked experiences. Like I was ready. You feel me? I couldn't have been more ready. I got clothes made. He got clothes made. We was like ready to go. We had the car rental, everything set up, paid for the flights checked into our hotel my husband had to get a visa so we was like being proactive and then we get to the airlines to where it's time for us to show our passports and show our covid tests and guitar airlines at lego told us that all flights leaving nigeria were banned entering dubai so we paid 1776 dollars 1700 76 dollars and some odd cents or whatever for a flight that we found out when we got there we could not fly out guitar like what the fuck was y'all doing because i'm really pissed because it's, i feel like if we couldn't fly out why did y'all sell us the flights like for real for real why did y'all sell us the flights we couldn't fly out i was at the airport i was so pissed but let me tell you about guitar airlines let me tell you about that wench over and that goes in the office okay so we went into the office you know i'm upset i'm crying i'm just i'm just over it and it's just a lot going on and then she tells us okay well we're gonna you know cancel your ticket refund your your flight and you'll be good we couldn't fly out to ghana we couldn't fly out to morocco or tanzania or whatever we just had to get our flights canceled and refund well come to find out 30 days later she did not cancel our flights she did not issue the refund and now i'm going back and forth with travel genio and guitar on instagram and twitter about my money because where's my 1700 for my flights but realistically i was so pissed y'all like oh my god i was so pissed about that you know so needless to say we decided to book a flight and go to Ghana for my birthday, we had to decide right at the airport where we want to go because we wasn't going to go back home. We wasn't going to stay in Lagos. We we live in Nigeria. Like, that's not a vacation for me if someplace that I'm at most of the time, right? So, we book a flight to Ghana, a different flight. On top of the $1,700 that was spent, we booked a flight to Ghana the day of. Now, mind you, if we booking a flight the day of, how much you think it costs? It was $900, like $1,000. So now we had $2,700. We had to book a new Airbnb, do all of that stuff. But shout out, who did we fly through? Awa, uh, African World Airlines. So we flew out to Ghana and baby. The flight wasn't bad because it was an hour flight, but guitar, y'all on my shit list. Y'all pissed me off, for real. So, you already know that Wahala does happen at the airport. So, we find out that I need a visa to go to Ghana. Now, we got a visa for my husband to go to Dubai. Didn't need it. Um, and then all of these people traveling to Ghana, I didn't think I needed a visa. Well, I find out at the airport after I bought my plane ticket that I had to get a visa. So, I had to pay $300 to get a visa at the airport to go to Ghana last minute. It was just like, it was so much going on until I was kind of like, just, I was just ready to get somewhere and get in the bed. Cause mind you, we was we got to the airport at like four or 5 a.m. Cause we had a, a early flight and then we had to deal with that issue. So mind you, we spent the whole day because our flights to Ghana didn't lead to that night. So we was basically in the Lagos airport all fucking day 
trying to go somewhere for my birthday, go somewhere for our honeymoon, go somewhere that we haven't been before. But granted, my husband, he's been to Ghana a bunch of times. So it wasn't, now the trip has been denounced because he been already. I've never been. He actually had friends there that we turned up with. But last minute, we decided to go to Ghana, y'all. So I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't excited about going to Ghana. I was excited about going to Ghana when I lived in America, but once I got to Nigeria, it was like Ghana like going to Chicago. Ghana's like going to Miami. It wasn't special, but you know, I was like, you know what? I've never been to Ghana, I'm gonna make the most of it. And granted, now you know, we, we traveling through COVID pandemic and we had to pay for tests to go, right? So we had to get two tests at 50,000 naira, y'all do the math, right? It's over $100. Um, so how about when we got to Ghana, after paying for all of these COVID tests, doing all of this stuff, this stressing, we had to pay, well, I had to pay $150 for a test when you land. Now, mind you, we had to take a test so we can get on the flight. Then we had to take a test to get through immigration. Like, we had to pay, I had to pay $150. My husband only had to pay $50 because he's, uh, he had a Nigerian passport. But the blue passports, they charged me $150. Like, and then I had to pay for a COVID test to come back home. And then once you get here, you gotta pay for another test seven days after being here. I'm over these COVID test fees, like for real, for real. Granted, in the States, I didn't have to pay for a test. In a couple situations, I was like blessed and I have to pay for a test. But Ghana, y'all gotta do something about this 150. Let a nigga know when they get there. And all of this stuff that we had to do when we got there, the, the the questionnaire we had to fill out, all of this paperwork we had to fill out for immigration, which I'm cool with the immigration paper, but this COVID stuff that you gotta take as soon as you get off the plane that you don't know nothing about because Nigeria ain't tell us was a headache. The fact that we had to pay 150, where well, I had to pay 150 for a COVID test after I just paid for a COVID test was, oh. the best thing was it was throat test. It wasn't a nose test because I'm tired of getting my nose scraped. So, yeah, but Ghana, I ain't with that $150 COVID test when you land, especially after paying for a test to come, to get on the flight. And that y'all ask for every single step, everywhere you go, before you get on the plane, before you, every, every time you go to see somebody, they ask them for a damn COVID test result. Like, oh God, but yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna see down there. No, babe, over that way. So let's get to this Airbnb. First and foremost, shout out to Kobe and I can't think. I think it was John. I think it was that ran it. So I was looking for Airbnb. I just I wanted to be by the water. I wanted a resort style. I didn't want to be an actor in the city. I just wanted to be a way for like I'm on vacation. And I found this beautiful Airbnb. Oh my God! It was so nice. The people were nice. Um, the staff was um when I say amazing. Oh my God! And they upgraded our room. Like. How you love that? The food that they served me. They tried. They tried. Shall you try? Let me. I see my, my hair sticking up. Sorry about that. Listen. They tried. They tried with the vegan food. And I didn't like the vegan kebabs that they wound up bringing me because it was just fried hard tofu. And I thought it was going to be on a stick, like a whole kebab. But. You know, one thing I will say about the Airbnb, they care. They give you a lot of carrots, and it is so fresh. I had such, oh my God, I had such a good time there. And they really treated me so well. The view was beautiful. So the Airbnb was wonderful. I can't say, I mean, it wasn't a five-star place, but the people made it five-star. Like, I would... I gave them the best review I ever gave on Airbnb, but you know, check out the place, check out the room, 
It was beautiful. My husband loved it. I loved it. We found ganja there. We was, they had a bar there, a club there. People were shooting videos. Like if you seen my TikTok that I did, well, I did little snippets. Most of the the scenery that you seen by the water. That was where we were staying, and it was so beautiful and so serene. So, shout out to that Airbnb host. And if you are looking for an Airbnb in Ghana, hit me up, and I'm going to refer them to you because they was pretty cool. about Ghana vegan food. We went to this one restaurant, Tatale. It was cool, but I really like it like that. Like, I thought I was going to get like some some real good vegan options in Ghana, and I didn't. Ghana need to step their vegan life up. It wasn't because, I mean, I guess I was just like so hell-bent on Dubai. And being here in Nigeria, you know, is I'm very limited on vegan food. So I wanted burgers, tacos. I wanted something. I wanted like a bunch of vegan food. And the restaurant that we went to, I did not like the dessert. I'm gonna say I did not like the dessert. The meal, I thugged it. I thugged it out. But that dessert, baby, that apple crumble, that shit was nasty. That it was horrible. I ain't like it. I ain't like it. You know. Sorry, I didn't. Maybe when I go back, I can try some other vegan restaurants, but I feel like Ghana needs a me to be there to tell them what's good, what's not, and to bring. I might have to open up a restaurant in Ghana because they vegan food, I won't wear it. But, you know, the, the places that I did go, they, they, they finessed some vegan food for me. They made it, they veganized it. The hotel was very gracious, um, but when I said like breakfast, they gave me salad for breakfast and toast. Like, I don't want that. I don't want salad with no dressing. It was just lettuce, tomatoes, and cucumbers. And I guess a little seed. I don't know, but let me tell you something. I had so much raw food. And then we went to a Jamaican restaurant where I had Itao. But I thought I was going to have, like, vegan options because I used Happy Cow the whole time I was in like, um, in Ghana. And um, I don't know. I might I might have to call Happy Cow and say, it wasn't given what y'all said it was supposed to give. <laughs> it wasn't. I'm still hungry. I still want a burger. I'm waiting for my husband to come. I told my husband... You a good husband, but give me a burger. You'll be the best husband in the world because I want a burger. Beyond me, send me a burger. Send me some. At this point, I take an impossible burger. And I don't even mess with an impossible burger. I just want a burger. For my birthday, I did not have a burger. That's what I want. I love burgers. That's me. Everybody else, fancy stuff. I want burgers. I want a vegan burger with cheese. And fries. If I can get chili cheese fries, I'm from the D. Chili cheese fried me, Coney Island me, soul food me. I'm that type of vegan. That's why my arms look like this. <laughs> That's why that stomach look like that. Because I'm a soul food vegan. I'm trying. I got to lose weight. But stay tuned for more of that. That's that's next episode. You want me to just order and do some food?
What she think? You like it? <laughs> no, I got my own. <laughs> yeah, I know. Who's gonna make it like that for you? Like? All right. Who's gonna talk to? So listen, one of the main attractions in Ghana um, is this wall, the ancestral wall, right? And you'll see a lot of video coming up. But let me give you a disclaimer before. I thought it was going to be an ancestral wall for the history of Ghana. When I seen B.B. King, I was over it. But check it out for yourself. Based on like attributes I wanted the children to kind of, you know, hopefully one day internalize, but at least be exposed to, you know. So you'll see people that you know well and people like, who in the world is that? You know, based on what I wanted to tell the children. And I'll, I'll give you a feel for that as we walk through. Like, this is what I wanted them to know about this particular person. Uh, so that's kind of how it, how it went, you know, I didn't, tourism never crossed my mind, to be honest, it was just like a place to bring the students, then people come, so, you know, it's free, so we just do it. Um, the weather has beaten up some of my, I got the, my one artist coming in to do a major touch-up next week, so as we get further down, you see the weather is beating up some of these. Okay, so let's start. Let's start with the Every group of students that comes through, has anyone here have heard of apartheid? And it's almost 100% no. And very seldom I'll get one, you know, student who might be a little older to say I've heard the word, you know. And the teachers, about 50-50. So this is, you know, right here in Africa, this is the level of uh, exposure that we're getting to something like this abhorrent apartheid system in South Africa. Now, if I ask them something about the Greeks, the Romans, and the rest, know. you know, uh, uh, King somebody, the eighth, thirteenth wife, and they, they know they got that one. But. So anyway, Steve Biko, being an anti-apartheid activist, an intellectual founder of the uh, Black Consciousness Movement, South African Teen Social Organization, all the rest. Of course, he was murdered uh, by the authorities. Just for his voice and his... Uh, I'm in a local space here, Jonas Carbo, uh, founder of New Mingo, that's where we are. People think we're in Prom Prom, but actually Prom Prom is kind of like across the street going that way. So Carbo was the founder of the place, and then uh, Te Jangma the first was the first chief. They used to be just Mingo, and then they broke up, and he came down and established New Mingo. So, uh, so even the school children here, a lot of them aren't quite sure. You know who who found it. Make sure we don't do that. Flags are getting a little raggedy, but I got Ghana, Ethiopia. You know, just trying to kind of represent Jamaica for the kind of di diaspora. Kure. I took the uh, Kwame Kure, rather. He took the uh, Kwame from Kwame Nkrumah. He took the Ture from Seiko Ture. Lived in Guinea. So that's the ancestral wall. Um, it's ran by a guy from Chicago, believe it or not, in Ghana. He's married to a Ghana woman, but it was a lot of Americans there. A lot of Americans, like Chicago, Detroit type Americans that was at the wall with us. Um, somebody from Atlanta too. But um, I thought it was going to be more like ancestral history, Ghana, learning about stuff that I haven't. Even though I did learn some stuff. I thought it was gonna be more like a, think of Mount Rushmore. Um, like, I thought it was gonna be like a wall when it was engraved. My husband did too. We thought we was gonna learn some stuff. I'm seeing Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, um, Winnie Mandela, like, bruh, you need to get some history of Ghana, more Ghana, or more Africa, ancestral wall. I don't wanna see BB King, I know your daddy, Pay favorite person to be king, but I don't want to see that on the wall. <laughs>
So listen, when that birthday came around, ain't nothing like a section in a bottle. So we was turned up. You hear me now? If you party in Nigeria, if you've been out in Nigeria, then you know how Africa turns up. We had a section, we had a bottle. We was turned up. My husband, homeboy came. He bought another bottle. So we over there turned. We had so, so many bottles that we had a bottle to last me through the rest of the stay. We wound up actually staying a couple extra days too because of COVID. But um, not because we had COVID, but to get the COVID test right because we had to find a place, blah, blah, blah. But we had Hennessy to last us for the next few days. Got a nightlife. If you looking for a safe turn up, Ghana has it. Ghana nightlife lit though. You know what I'm saying? With the Afro beats and just the vibe, baby. I love partying in Nigeria. I love partying in Africa. I would say Nigeria, but it's Africa now because it's always the sections. It's always the bottle service. It's always nice hookah. It's food. It's beautiful black faces dancing around. So Ghana nightlife is a thumbs up for me, boo, especially for the birthday because you know I was supposed to be in Dubai on a yacht, right? I was supposed to be on the yacht going into my birthday. But I was in a nightclub in Ghana because of Guitar Airlines. But, okay, check that off. Partying in Ghana with a section. It's off my bucket list now. I know I mentioned I was supposed to be on the, on the yacht, right? I also was supposed to jet ski, but I found a place in Ghana where we went jet skiing, and it was me and my husband's first time jet skiing. I was scared. I ain't gonna lie. I should have jet skied by myself or with my husband because the boy was going too fast. It was water splashing on my lashes. I was just, which caused my lashes to be messed up the rest of the trip, but I had a good time, even though it was only like, what, 15, 10 minutes? I don't remember. My husband's not here, so I can't ask him. But it wasn't that long either. We was at a resort, the Aqua Aqua Resort, Aqua something like that resort. I, I have the name below. But it was a really cool place. I like the place. There was a lot of things to do. It was a pool there, jet skiing, riding a horse on the beach, um, beachside dinner. It was a lot of beautiful things to do. The ambiance is beautiful. There's people from all over the world. We got the jet ski for 10, 15 minutes. Next time, me and my husband said we want to run our own jet skis and we out here in the water on our own because now we accomplished it. But, you know, seeing I was supposed to jet ski in Dubai and I had scheduled that, at least we got the jet ski. You know, at least we still got to do it.
So, overall, I did enjoy myself. It was my first time going out of the country with a man, to be honest. I've never been out the country with a man. I've, I've been out of town with a man, but I've never been out the country. So, that was a cool experience, seeing traveling with my husband to a different country. Um, you know, I learned. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what I learned, ladies. For those of you from America, and I realized this and I told my husband this, um, I learned the role of a wife traveling, especially in Africa, right? I realized that when I was leaving with the passports and doing all this talking, they was giving me much wahala. They was trying to tax the sister in the airport and give me issues. I learned how to fully travel with my husband let my husband hold the passport, the tickets. I just step back. I just sit back with my mask on, with my hijab on, or whatever outfit I'm wearing, whatever, you know, covered up formal thing because it's cold. And I don't want nobody to see me. I don't want nobody to see my tattoos. I, don't want, I just want to be anonymous, right? And I learned the role of a wife in traveling. And now I understand why women be traveling, they just be quiet and their husband be handling everything. It's not a power thing. It's not a masculine anything. It's a talk to him. Don't get me, especially when you travel in Nigeria. Let your husband handle everything. If y'all come in here and y'all come in with your husbands, ladies, don't try to be the head. Mm -mm. Let your husband handle everything. You hear me? Like, like, for real. Let your husband handle everything. Um, but overall, Ghana, I'm so glad that I went. I'm glad I got it over with. It wasn't Dubai. It wasn't a replacement for Dubai. The malls, I couldn't go to Gucci. I couldn't go to Louboutin. I couldn't go to Versace. Um, I couldn't really just sit by the beach on the yacht. I could, it's a lot of things that I couldn't do. But I did get a chance to go to Ghana. I did get a chance to experience it. I did have a good time with my husband. A lot of laughs, a lot of turnips. Um, and we still got a chance to chill by the water. You know, it was still a beautiful view. It was a beautiful experience. And the people, let me tell you something. The people in Ghana, coming from Nigeria to Ghana, they are like night and day. They are so... I would say like the southerners, they're like the southerners of Africa. They were so hospitable, even though Nigeria people are, you know, you meet some nice hospitable people. Ghana, is it, it gave me that southern feel. It was just like the hospitality was on this point, you know. So I really loved um, being able to be in the country of Ghana, experiencing certain things. It was really cool for me to meet other Americans in ghana especially black americans i thought that was really dope um it was actually a guy from florida that was staying at our resort so um if you are thinking about traveling to ghana i would say accra is cool accra is the you know the place to be we stayed in accra the last two days but if you can step further away further 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 away in ghana um and be by the water to the beaches and resorts trust me you will love it don't expect to do too much. And when you go to Ghana and you go to the resorts, don't try to do too much. Just chill. Enjoy the ambiance. Enjoy the people, the food. Maybe you want to go and see some local sites. You know, that's always a thing. But most importantly, just go to relax and then just enjoy the ambiance of being in Ghana. Um, also, there's a lot of Americans buying land and building homes. So if you're looking you know to be in a place where nigeria has a few hang-ups that you might not be ready for but if you're looking to just go to a place where you could just set up shop and be around more other americans then i would say ghana is the place but anyway this is concludes the episode of life of the vegan fixing the ghana edition hopefully you learned some things you're entertained Stay tuned for more. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I have so much coming. So many things is going to be coming up for you. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, all of that. Listen, I got more episodes coming. I got more. 
I'll be reading y'all comments. I'll be seeing what y'all be wanting. So I got you, baby. So stay tuned for more. I'm out of here. Peace.